I am Bala Tyagarajan. I am an artist who paints with acrylics. I am speaking to you from Midlothian, Texas. I just moved here recently, um, about four months back from Chicago. And um, actually in the last week I opened a gallery in my backyard um, because I do about 20 to 25 art fairs a year. And given that this year we don't have art fairs, um, with all the time we had and when we moved here to Texas, this presentation with um, giving you a quick tour of my gallery space and uh, talk about my painting process at the same time and then we can walk up to my studio and I will do a quick demo on how I paint and if you have any questions please feel free to ask as I am talking and walking and um, I'll be happy to answer any questions you have. I'm gonna flip the camera here really quick so you can see my paintings and stuff me and um, have fun. So this is what my backyard looks like and I am calling my gallery as the garden gallery. I'm hoping to have a lot of um, flowering things growing here pretty soon and um, I mentioned that I paint with acrylics, I actually paint in a unique technique of piping paint on the canvas to create a lot of texture on my paintings. So my inspiration for this is henna. I started painting in the same technique as doing henna so that um, I create these raised lines. And um, a quick look at my gallery space, Basically, this was a two-car garage building that was not finished. Um, me and my husband, we spent the last three months trying to finish this building, uh, which involved a lot of contractor woes and stuff, but um, I'm so happy that all the work is over and I have a really beautiful space here and hosted my first event last weekend. Here are some of the paintings from my animal series. And um, as we move on, I paint mandalas and that's what I started with. And these are my primary body of work. Mostly a lot more colorful than this one. I call this painting the cloud mandala. It's very different from my usual paintings. And um, as you can see, the background has a lot more going on. I added some medium. Um, you can see the textured lines here a little bit more clearly. And as we move on, here are my florals. And the sunflower is one of my latest paintings that I did this year. I use a lot of metallic and iridescent paints when I paint. That's why you're seeing all these um, variation in the color as I am moving around. And all my paintings are also finished with a glass varnish and that adds an extra layer of luster and sheen to the paintings. Here is one of my recent series that I just started after finishing the studio building. I'm calling these the Colors of Holy series. Um, you know, an explosion of color as, um, as in the Holy Festival that's celebrated in India. And the idea or the inspiration behind these paintings is that given that I paint mandalas, People always tell me that, oh, how about painting on a circular canvas, right? And the, I have done a custom piece for a collector that was a mandala on a round canvas, but just doing it as an entire series was not something that appealed to me. 
But painting on a round canvas did sound exciting. So I said, when I started working with the round canvas, I'm not going to do a symmetric piece, but asymmetric paintings. And um, that's what this series is born. And actually, I'm going to be demonstrating on one of my new paintings in the same series today. Here are some more of my mandala paintings. And um, you can see all of my works on my website at artbybala.com. It's A-R-T by Bala, B-A-L-A. -A. Uh, please take a look when you get a chance. And I do have to apologize that the space doesn't quite look like a gallery today because we had a lot of the furniture outside for the event on Saturday and everything got moved in um, over the weekend. I also uh, reproduce my works on canvas, on metal, and there are fine prints on paper. And um, I have some small originals here that are like desk art, basically. Um, some original paint. Um, I have a coloring book. I generally say I can paint, but I can't draw. So I challenge myself to uh, hand draw a coloring book. And that's how that came by. I have some 20, um, 21 calendars. And I'm hoping next year is going to be a lot more peaceful to all of us than what this year has been. And they feature uh, my mandala paintings, and it's a square calendar this year. I have some Christmas ornaments. I'm going to be painting more of them pretty soon. Uh, note cards, and you can see all of this in my, on my website. Uh, thank you, Written House Choir Fine Art Show for um, posting my website right there on the comments for everyone to see. So now we are going to walk up to my studio. As you can see, the building behind us Usually my two dogs are hanging out with me here. I just left them inside. If they hear me now, they might start barking. Um, <laughs> bring them on camera. They, they are home. I left them home. Uh, I didn't want them to bark here. But every time the neighbors uh, drive by, you know, it sets them off. Um, so I'm going to flip the camera again and give you guys a good view of my um, studio space. So again, this is, this is the first time I've actually had a proper studio space. I've been uh, painting for almost 10 years now and being a professional artist and showing my works for the last eight. Um, when we lived in Chicago, the family room was my studio. And now, not only do I have a studio, I also have a gallery, isn't that amazing? I'm really thankful, well, for my husband's job that relocated us to Texas and um, for being able to do this. And I have a messy sink that we put in recently and I do have a lot of paint and a lot of canvas. I guess that's most artists. Um, I have a easel that rotates actually I don't have a canvas on it right now but when I'm painting some of my big mandalas um, this part here rotates so I'm not painting upside down a lot which I used to do um, well I have a huge canvas waiting for some inspiration And uh, as you see, all my artwork is downstairs in the gallery, so there's not much on the walls here. I do have um, some of my older paintings that I started with when I started, initially started painting. Here is a piece. It's a column painting on canvas. Columns are basically um, little welcome prayers kind of thing that we draw in front of her house in South India every morning, you know, the women do it. So um, initially I wanted to paint these on canvas and I was trying to do them with a brush and getting these thin lines and dots with a brush was very challenging to someone 
who has a PhD in biology but didn't go to art school or had practiced art before. And um, that's how the idea of creating textured lines and stuff, thin lines with a brush was born. And after many tries, I chose the henna style piping of paint to do this. And let's see. Now I want to do a little demo here. These are the canvases I have <laughs> um, to work on today. One of my friends called them little bubbles. I think they are, they are bubbles of happiness, right? Happy colors. I'm gonna flip the camera back on me. And, oh wait, I do wanna show you guys one more thing. Um, here is my workstation. It is a little messy. Um, I do have a cup of chai. Um, here is the bags that have paint in them that I use for piping paint. I have not been using these much recently, especially since I moved to Texas. Um, so they are a little um, hot today and having issues with flowing. I generally like to use these little squeeze bottles. Um, the paint that I use don't come in these bottles. I just collect whoever has um, flat squeeze bottles to paint with. And I generally buy my paint in bulk in big containers like 500 ml. And, um, oh yes, these are all acrylic paint. Everything is water-based. I mean, I doing thick textured lines, if I try to use them with oils, I don't have the patience for, for doing them with oils. So these are all acrylic paint. Oh, one of the most important tools in my studio is a wrench. Um, my husband does get in trouble if this disappears from my table, which tends to happen occasionally. I do do a lot of brushwork, which when you see my paintings, it doesn't look like there's a lot of brushwork, but I do a lot of layering of, of the paint when I start painting. Uh, for example, just a plain canvas like this. It started with the ground layer. Uh, I generally use yellow, different shades of yellow, it doesn't matter. And then I do one layer of blue paint, just general acrylic matte blue. And then on top of it, I did another layer of um, a very metallic, kind of flashy blue paint. Uh, same thing with all the other canvases. You can see how the shade changes. Basically, when I play with these things, the effect is um, that, you know, as you walk along, the same painting looks slightly different from different angles, right? That's what iridescence does, and that's fun. So, oh yeah, someone's asking, what's the wrench for? Yes, uh, <laughs> paint dries. You know how uh, when we buy paint at Home Depot and stuff, they give you a little opening thing. So the wrench is for opening these guys when they all dry out. Um, so sometimes it's, you know, I'm not using the same colors again and again, so the wrench comes in very handy. I am not brand specific about the paints I use. As you can see, I have so many different brands. You can tell by the shape and the size of the tubes. Um, I don't have favorites either. I like to experiment, so I keep playing around. Uh, you can see in the corner, I have some paints that's from like a mom and pop production facility in California. I have some of these Artisa paints that, you know, you get 100 ads a day on Facebook. Um, so without talking too much more, I guess I'll do some painting. It's gonna take me a second here to set the camera. Is this a good angle for you guys? Are you able to see clearly what I'm, my hands? Okay. And generally in these paintings, what I have done is after I did my um, 
background layers. I um, the colors of Holy Series is really easy because I just basically start drawing some shapes, right? I'm not particular. I don't care about symmetry. I don't care about holding on to the structures. Um, so, you know, I take the idea of mandalas, but it doesn't necessarily have to hold, um, you know, the size or the patterns need to be the same. sure if you guys can see this um, where do I buy the circular canvas almost all of my um, canvases are bought at Blick uh, an art supply store and uh, these canvases I think are the well it doesn't say on the back I think these are the Frederick's brand uh, round canvas And so you guys get the idea, right? So I'm drawing my shapes. There's no particular order or anything to them. And then once my shapes are drawn, I start filling in um, the colors. So this is basically, I do a white on top of my outlines and fill them with the colors I want. I am, um, I don't visualize what I am painting before I am painting. So I don't have any ideas where I am proceeding in my head. I call this magic because everything happens once I sit down here and start painting, um, then it shows up, right? Um, so basically I like doing the background colors on these round canvases for some reason and they seem to dictate um, the colors that's gonna work together well on the canvas. So here is one that I just filled in recently. And then as you can see in this other one, I did another layer of metallic paint on top. That's where the luster is coming from. And I'm gonna, once I do that part, I start with my black outlines. Uh, thank you, Jainty. Appreciate your comment and feedback. Um, so I start my textures. I can't talk and paint. Um, so if you have any questions, feel free to ask. One of the comments I do get um, very frequently is that I have a steady hand and you know, yes, I do have a steady hand, but the way I paint, it's very meditative, right? And I have to be extremely mindful of uh, my movements and my strokes. And all of that comes from my breathing, basically. You know, I have to control my breathing to control the movement of my hands. So it comes down to steady breathing. And usually, this is never this quiet in my studio, by the way, so it feels like weird that I'm talking. Nobody's talking back to me, and um, also that it's very quiet. Um, a lot of artists I know like to listen to music when they paint. I do not listen to music. It's like when I try to listen to music, my brain starts paying attention to the music and then I'm not paying as much attention to what I'm doing here as I should be, right? So um, I like shows, TV shows, 
Usually Netflix is playing in the studio uh, anytime I am painting. I watch, I like to, uh, well I say watch, mostly I'm listening to them, uh, shows that have long seasons so I don't have to try and find shows all the time. Um, right now I am watching Supernatural. Um, actually, uh, Jainthi, I am not left-handed. I think because we are on Facebook Live, it's kind of um, inverting everything you're seeing, so it might look like I am, but I am painting with my right hand. One of the disadvantages of painting with a squeeze bottle as compared to a piping bag is that, I don't know if you guys saw this happen, but I just burst a tiny air bubble right there as I was working. Um, so I do have to be very careful when I can feel one coming, I need to stop, I have to tap. You might hear me tapping quite often when I am painting. Uh, that's what I'm doing is like trying to break up the air bubbles before they burst on my canvas. And when things like that do happen, where I either burst an air bubble or I squeeze too hard and there's too much paint on the canvas, or, you know, uh, a lot of times uh, the thing I have, to be, I have to be conscious of the most is I smear the paint myself. Uh, when people look at my paintings, like the ones you saw downstairs, I do hear a lot of people say, oh, you must be patient, very patient. And I joke that I use up all my patient when I am painting and that's because of issues like this, right? So I have to be super careful not to uh, let mistakes are happen. I usually don't call them as mistakes, but... And when they do happen, it's very hard to clean them. Some of the paint I can wipe off if I smear the smear a, Part of the canvas, yes, I have to grab a wet drag or something and um, try and clear everything. But otherwise, a lot of times, little strokes that are slightly off, the variations in the thickness of my lines, all those things stay on the canvas. Um, I think those are part of how I paint and how my technique works. So they just belong in the canvas. I don't try too much to remove them. Um, how long does this take to dry? It depends how thick my lines are and what paint I am using. So um, one of the things I mentioned about the brand of paint I am using, for something like the drying time, it does make a difference. Um, so something like this, it might be slightly dry to the touch in about half an hour. But usually when I do lines, for example, in this canvas, I would just do all my black lines, stop, go to a different canvas, um, and then come back to it later when I know it's completely dry um, on the next day, basically. Um, because what happens is when I try and do another color next to it, invariably the squeeze bottle will touch it and there will be a smear that happens. I'm gonna show you right here. So here is one where I have done the black lines and then as it was drying, I went and did my white lines. In this series, I am doing all my outlines in a little bit of black and a little bit of white. And if you can tell right here, I pulled up some of the black along with the white as I was doing it because 
um, the paint was not completely dry. And I'm hoping it's dry to the touch. So I did these black and white lines this morning. Uh, the white is not completely dry in some places, but I'm gonna try and add a little bit more textures to this. So I have a blue, uh, turquoise blue here. And I don't have any tips on top of the squeeze bottle. It's just what comes with the bottle itself. And basically the thickness of my lines change with how much pressure I am putting uh, when I'm painting. That's why when I'm in the middle of a painting, it's really hard for me to stop, do something else and come back um, with the same color because what happens is when I come back, it takes a little bit to get to the same pressure I was doing before. And let's try one more color here really quick. And I don't draw what I am painting again beforehand, so it's all completely freehand, you know. The patterns and stuff, they just happen as I go along. Jainti is saying cell memory. E e yes, there is a lot of uh, muscle memory involved here. Um, it, uh, you know, the patterns are so repetitive. Sometimes, you know, even though I say I have to be mindful and pay attention, uh, you know, right now I'm talking and at the same time painting. So um, I can manage to do that without messing things up. Or hopefully not messing things up, I should say. And a lot of these patterns that I am doing are basic, you know, geometric patterns, henna patterns. If you're familiar with Zentangle, uh, I guess they use a lot of these types of patterns these days. And then this is the same way I paint my circular mandalas that you guys saw downstairs. I don't do a lot of sketching or drawing beforehand. And, you know, people ask me how can I uh, paint a circle freehand and the answer it it comes with uh, practice you know you try to draw one circle freehand everybody will mess up the first time right but after doing it for like 600 times you're not going to mess up so uh, basically that's what happens
And for my larger canvases, especially when I'm doing custom paintings, I do mark off some grids. I might draw some lines to, um, you know, not wander off too much. Usually most people um, cannot tell when my um, circles are not perfect, perfectly circular. Uh, the only person who can for the most time say it is my husband. He'll come home from work and he'll be like, why couldn't you take the time to use some instrument to do them? You know, that's part of where I don't have a lot of patience when I'm painting. Uh, it needs to keep moving. And How long does it take for me to finish a painting? As you can see, just right here on my table, I have canvases of, you know, three different sizes. So it's really impossible to tell how long a painting takes. And usually, also, I am working on multiple pieces at the same time. The only reason there isn't multiple pieces in workable stages right now here, um, is because I was trying to get ready for my gallery opening last Saturday and finished a whole bunch of new paintings for that event. And since the opening, today is the second day I am able to sit and paint here. So that's why you see these canvases here are currently my work in progress in different stages. Most of the strokes I'm doing here, I can actually do them, um, you know, straight and also upside down, depending on which way the canvas is facing. Um, the table I'm working on is basically a home-built table. I uh, bought a tabletop from Ikea, and uh, there are um, those opening-type things on the back, like I don't remember what they're called now. Um, so I am painting at an angle here. I can't paint on, um, well I can, but I would rather paint at an angle than on a flat surface. A lot of my paints are not a straight of, of the bottle or a tube. I usually mix um, many of them with a thickening medium. I use different kinds of gel, either a glossy gel sometimes or just a regular thickening medium uh, to make them slightly thicker. It's always striking the right balance with, between a paint uh, being able to flow enough, but also being able to hold up its texture enough. Um, oh, Written House is asking me that question and I just talked about it without even seeing it. Um, Generally on a canvas this size, I try to limit myself to about three or four colors and not uh, use too many. Um, sometimes I go up to eight. And then when I am painting peacocks, uh, you can see some of my peacock works on my website at artbybala.com. 
uh, I pull out all the stops. Any painting and every paint, paint that I have around me comes into play. I don't generally have one favorite thing to paint. I like to experiment. I don't like to keep painting um, the same things again and again. Uh, and if I do, they all look very different. It's kind of fun, like, you know, how can you improve on the same thing the next time you do it? And I think I want to um, stop the painting part of this talk, like with these strokes. So if you have any questions about my paint, uh, anything, please ask now. Uh, feel free. Are the bottles empty and you fill it? Yes. Um, a lot of my friends donate me bottles. Some of them have had glazes in the past for pottery. Um, I have bought like window paint in these flat bottles and you know emptied them down on the sink and filled up my paint so the bottle is basically for the ease of use um, the round bottles kind of give you a pain here on the thumb if you're squeezing too much the flat bottles help with that a lot um, the piping bags are awesome because they don't hurt at all except um, i cannot refill a piping bag so um, that's been my issue with them. And they were great when I was doing a lot of small paintings, but as I started doing bigger pieces, the painting bags were um, kind of limiting. If I can make them bigger, like, you know, the actual size of piping bags, uh, it might make a difference, but... Um, do you frequently do ambi ambidextrous painting? No, actually I don't. I think it's just the um, uh, just the way you're seeing me here. This is my right, but you're probably seeing it as my left. Um, so that's why it looks like I was painting with my left, even though I was not. I was painting with my right hand. I uh, actually, you know, my left hand is mostly for turning around canvases. And um, I have a lot of these little needles. Um, because paint just clog my squeeze bottles quite often. So I use them and that's what I'm holding in my left. Are the piping bags just like plastic bags? Um, yes, the piping bags are made of uh, cellophane paper. It's just plastic paper that's cut in parts and um, rolled into a cone, similar to a henna cone or, you know, like piping, uh, icing, uh, similar concept and uh, just taped up. And um, I have started experimenting with actually cake piping tips. Uh, some of the flower paintings that I showed you in the gallery pot have uh, little florets that are pulled out with uh, piping, piping tips for cakes. And then let's see what else I can show you around in my studio. I hope you all got a good look at the painting I was working on here can't tell. Um, oh, I have a crib here in the studio. Uh, this is where all my uh, pro in progress pieces are. Um, a lot of these are canvases I prepped before our move here to Texas. Oh, well, it's upside down, but um, it's a work in progress elephant piece. It's going to after I finish the little canvases on my table, this is what I'm going to get to next. Um, here is uh, some more stuff I started experimenting with. Um, not sure if you can see clearly. So this is a peacock piece that I'm gonna be working on. 
One of the questions I do get asked a lot when I am at art fairs particularly, people come and touch my paintings right away because they think it's fabric. Well, canvas is a fabric, but the way my textured lines are, it looks like uh, embroidery or needlework. So um, when they kept asking that, I wanted to actually try and paint on fabric and see how it looks. So this is a piece of uh, silk sari. All my colors, if you saw, were inspired by the colors of saris that men wear in India. So um, I actually, someone gave me, um, they're really old and, you know, falling apart silk sari that I cut into a small piece and now experimenting on. This was something, again, I was working on before my move and haven't got, had a chance to get back to. Um, I have actually a second peacock on a different colored piece of silk. Hopefully that experiment works um, because I know when I do the, those pieces, I cannot varnish them, so they are going to be um, as this. And I'm hoping there's no change in the paint after a few years. I think we are at the 40 minute mark here. I really appreciate everybody coming here and watching my presentation today. Uh, this is the first time people have gotten a tour of my studio space. Uh, it's exciting. Does anybody have any more <laughs> questions here? Okay, if not, I would like to thank the Written House Square Fine Art Show for this opportunity for me to show you my, all my work. Really excited, some of my friends were able to join me here today. And um, please visit my website, artbybala.com for more of my works. Uh, thank you so much.